On this episode of Sloan's Wilderness Expeditions, I go on an epic 26-mile backpacking adventure on Indiana's Adventure Hiking Trail, a national recreation trail with extreme terrain changes and amazing views over river valleys. Hey folks, Cliff Dweller here, Sloan's Wilderness Expeditions. I'm going on a three day, two night little adventure here, in southern Indiana, on the Adventure Hiking Trail. The Adventure Hiking Trail is located in southern Indiana and traverses through O'Bannon Woods State Park as well as Harrison Crawford State Forest. The trail is actually 26 and a half miles long from the Rock Creek Trailhead and skirts three waterways the Blue River, the Ohio River, and Indian Creek. However, none of these are truly accessible for water filtering, so most through hikers use a combination of four road crossings as water drops. The area is pockmarked with sinkholes and caves, and though there are a few small hillside springs and frog ponds, this is mostly considered a dry trail. There are five overnight shelters along the route, though they were all closed during my through hike. There's a lot more signs of spring down here in southern Indiana than there is back north in the Lafayette area where I'm from. Look at these hills out there. It's hard for me to even believe seeing all these hills that uh, I'm still in Indiana. There's a reason the Adventure Hiking Trail is considered one of the more strenuous trails in Indiana. You can see the cliffs over there. The downside there is a ravine. The ravine is where we started at. We're now approaching the top of this cliff. And that is pretty much what the Adventure Hiking Trail is. A constant up and down all of these cliffs. The Adventure Hiking Trail is considered a dry trail, meaning that there's pretty much nowhere to get water on this 25 mile uh, round trip. It's, uh, the only spots to get water actually are on the west side when the uh, trail skirts the Blue River. You can stop there and, uh, and filter some water and also it skirts the uh, campground in the state park where you could probably go in and top off with some water and that is pretty much it. Everything else has dry creek beds like this behind me. And the reason for those dry creek beds is because of the karst topography here. This area has hundreds of sinkholes and caves, so pretty much all the water goes straight down into those. It would take a flood to uh, fill up all those caves and sinkholes before you'll see water in these creek beds. It ain't moving. There's still some water in this creek. Yeah, look at that trail. And it just goes straight up. Straight up. Feels better than taking the pack off after having it on for a long hike. Ah, tell you what, those hills 
they, they are no joke. I mean, I had to take multiple breaks going up and down them hills. My heart just started thumping. Just said, yeah, I don't need to have a heart attack out here. <laughs> I'm going to have a hard time finding help. And uh, going downhill is about the same, though, you know. Gets to your knees and uh, my ankle, you know, seven months out from that Achilles injury, so it's still a little bit tender. But hey, we're making it just a little bit slower than I had originally intended. Anyway, we're finally to one of the highlights. We've made it to the old iron bridge over the Blue River. You can tell by the color of this river that a lot of the water in it is coming out of rock. That's what gives it that hue, those minerals from where the water has, has traveled through rock, either cliff sides or underground one. There's a public access on the other side of the bridge. There's a lot of people coming out and fishing. Well, my intention had been to uh, filter some water here. But look at the banks. It's just nothing but thick mud. If I try to get down to the edge there to get water, I'm just gonna slide right in. I think I am just going to hold off and try to make it to the campground and hope that the water is turned on for the season. And back up the hills we go. Now I see you. It's a beautiful animal. Look at those ears. Well, I came in to the campground from the very back end of it. And Comfort stations B, C, and D were all still locked up. None of the uh, water was turned on at any of the campsites back there. So I walked clear up to the front of it to finally find that Comfort Station A is on, unlocked, and with water running. I was able to top off my water. I didn't really need much, just, just top it off. And uh, even if I hadn't had this, I'd ran across a few uh, small uh, springs along the trail that I absolutely had to, I couldn't fill from. Literally, the day after I topped off my water at this campground, the state closed all campgrounds and shut down the restrooms and shut off the water. And got us another deer. Hey, deer. first glimpse of the Ohio River out there. Well, it is about 7 p.m. and I am beat. Did, well, my tracker says 10 miles. I'm pretty sure it's not quite that far yet. I am just shy of the Pioneer Shelter. It's down the hill here, not very far at all. Um, Let's see, I was coming up the trail, knew I probably wasn't going to make it to one of the Ohio River shelters. So I decided to uh, come up on top of this little peak here and uh, see if it was worthy of setting a tent up. And uh, well, I've got kind of a 360 view of all the hillsides around, distant views of the Ohio River. And voila, there's a fire ring, the stone chairs already up here, pre-made for me. Well, I'm hitting the sack. Good morning, folks. I had a eh, mostly good sleep last night. I was beat, that is for sure. I'm getting a later start today. Then what I had planned, had my alarm set for 6 a.m. 
course I just <laughs> knocked that off immediately because boy I was tired and uh, also what I didn't really think about is the fact that I crossed time zones out here so I went from eastern time zone to central time zone which means 6 a.m. alarm was technically 7 a.m. the time I'm thinking so definitely a later start than what I expected back on the trail just made it to the pioneer shelter I did not leave a water dump here at the pioneer shelter since it's only a couple miles from the campground but I did leave myself a tasty little treat oh yeah that's a Powerade <sighs> all right soon we'll be leaving the O'Bannon Woods State Park section of the trail and heading into the Harrison Crawford State Forest and they have constant timber harvests in there so we'll be seeing a lot of evidence of that all right Cliff Dweller hiking trail Catfish and I actually hiked the Cliff Dweller Trail in 2018. There is a tiny source of water coming out of a spring on the side of the cliff. It is a beautiful morning out here. But between that sun heating things up and that long uphill I just did, I'm going to have to shed some layers really quick. I have arrived at the Ohio River Shelter. This is where I would have loved to have camped last night, but since I didn't get started until 1 in the afternoon, I just couldn't quite make it that far. So right now, all of these camp shelters, overnight shelters, along the Adventure Hiking Trail are closed. And that is because of the ongoing pandemic with the coronavirus. Um, they just don't want anybody coming in here and potentially spreading it. So that is why I brought my tent. And I kind of prefer it that way anyway. But this is the view if you did decide to camp here. The High River, although you got a lot of industrial sounds over on the Kentucky side. So this little section of trail here is in the Charles C. Dean Bluffs Nature Preserve. Some beautiful scenery out here in the forest. This is when things really start to get real. Hardest part of the hike is coming up this tall hill here and I'm sure the camera cannot really capture its height we got a few of those to climb up on top and climb back down and back up yeah you got to know your limits when you're climbing up and down hills like this me I'm 50 years old not in the greatest shape frankly and uh, got family history of heart disease so I'm trying to take it easy if my heart starts pounding it's time for me to stop take a break catfish was here he'd probably be already to the top making fun of me what goes up must go down cheers all right I have arrived at Cold Friday Road, the site of my first water drop. I know I'm probably being a little ridiculous here, but I like to keep my uh, water drops out of sight. Yeah. I was planning this little trip, it was kind of last minute, but the forecast down here was for cloudy skies. 20 to 40 percent chance for rain so that's what I planned for instead we got these beautiful sunny skies and I'm probably going to end up sunburnt 
I'm on one of the highest ridges I've been on yet. I just noticed this little frog pond over here. Yep. Mm. Pond. Well, if they're going to mark it like that, I must investigate. It's got to be more than what that little frog pond was, right? Not really. I'm really good at scaring ducks, it seems. I kind of assumed with some of the uh, flowers and such I've seen growing in the area that this is probably close to an old homestead and sure enough here it is. This is the old Marshall Pate homestead from back in the very early 1900s. Many of the early settlers here were of French origin. Most ultimately sold their land to the state in the 1930s during the Great Depression. That's when the CCC came in and created the state forest. I am surrounded by orange marks on the trees. So this area is about to get devastated from logging. Well, I've arrived at the homestead overnight shelter, also known as the chimney shelter apparently. Something I just thought was interesting when I started this hike yesterday the signs had originally said up until april 7th nobody to be using the overnight shelters they have come through today and updated them to say april 20th Dry creek beds really are pretty cool. Well, we've made it to the primitive shelter, but according to my map, from the previous shelter we were at, the chimney shelter, to get to here was only supposed to be two and a half miles. But man, it took me forever. This ter terrain here is really taking a toll on me. Very slow moving. I'm gonna try to make it to the Indian Creek shelter. And I may call it a day there. It'll mean a lot more hiking tomorrow. But my body needs a rest. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Indian Creek shelter. There's your shelter. Here's the view. call this Indian Creek shelter because Indian Creek is down below the base of this cliff. I think they should have named it the sinkhole shelter because it is completely surrounded by sinkholes. There's one, 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 that's one, and there's one. That is one huge one. And those are just the sinkholes easily accessible right off the trail, all within 100 yards of the Indian Creek Shelter. Now the dilemma. To set up my tent here by the cabin and hope that nobody else shows up tonight and want me to camp here too. Because you know me, I like my, uh, I like my solitude. Yeah, that'll do. I love the night sounds. I can hear an owl and some turkeys in the distance.
Good morning, folks. Day three here on the Adventure Hiking Trail. I had a really good night. I was beat last night and I slept well. Got to leave my tent uh, half open so I had a view of the uh, stars and the moon all night. And of course the morning view. Here we finally get a pretty good view of Indian Creek down below. Slow and steady. And a nice little pond right off trail. No ducks to scare this time. So in the spring I would say there are a handful of spots that you could filter water. It's a very small spring here, but it could be done. Later in the summer and fall, this will not be here. All right, I have made it to the old forest road for my final water drop. But you know, this is the last leg. It's got five more miles of trail back to the head. I think I'm going to drop some weight. All right. Final water drop. And then like leaving yourself a little bit of trail magic. I mentioned I was going to drop some weight at that lost water drop. And boy, did I. Now the backpack I use is a Osprey Aether 2017 model and the coolest feature about that backpack is that the lid on it detaches and turns into a day pack. So I detached it, put everything in the little day pack that I would need for my remainder of my hike out and then put my black rain cover over the rest of the pack and hid it behind a pile of logs where nobody can see it. Oh yeah, this is going to be way easier. I know that might sound like uh, advertisement for Osprey, but I'll tell you what, if there's anybody out there that manufactures some ultralight backpacks, hit me up for a sponsorship. You can definitely see where the timber companies have had their heavy equipment out here. I just passed a, uh, a grandfather and his granddaughter who are out mushroom hunting. They're from the area. And I thought I was upset with all the logging going on in our state forests, but yeah, they had even stronger opinions on it than I do, and I don't blame them. This is the kind of mess that logging leaves behind. This is what they call forest management. You know, I wonder if that turtle was walking through here wondering what the heck happened to its forest. Forest management. Definitely the remains of something here. Maybe an old well. Forest hides many secrets. All right, I have made it back to the spur trail. 
takes us back to the Rock Creek Trailhead. And that, dear viewers, is the end of our expedition onto the Adventure Hiking Trail. Well, folks, the Adventure Hiking Trail was everything I hoped it to be, and then some. It was quite the adventure, and it was kind of brutal at times, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad that you guys stuck around and watched it. Till next time, peace out.